Hello, welcome to BIMobject.com's YouTube channel. My name is Matthew Jackson, Digital Content Manager here at BIMobject, and today we're going to have a look at the Sembrite Archicad uh, objects in detail. This is a detailed tutorial. Uh, there's also a Revit video uh, which is explaining how uh, these objects work in Revit as well. So you can see here from the pictures some beautiful designs that you can do with the Sembrite system, and we hope that you'll be able to produce these uh, within Archicad with the tools that we are providing to you. So download the library in the standard way, and here we have created a, a, a one-story building with a few windows and doors, uh, etc. So select the walls that you want to apply uh, your design to, and go to Design Accessories, Wall Accessories, and uh, locate your Sembrite library, um, which I've shown here. So the first page that you see will be uh, kind of some of the basic information, such as cladding thicknesses, uh, airflow thicknesses, uh, and importantly, panel size. Um, so we've shown you the minimum and maximum values that you can have. Uh, I'm going to make these slightly smaller, um, and uh, I'm going to leave the, the panel gaps as 10 mil at, at, at this time. Next, then you can start playing around with the materials. So Sembrit allow you to select a, a palette of eight colors, and we have the different uh, Sembrit color families in here. Um, and I'm going to choose the Metro. Uh, I, I like this color range personally. Uh, you might like others. You can also choose uh, the NCS color range as well. Uh, Sembri allow you to uh, order custom colors. So if you want to start playing around with some custom colors, by all means, we've given you that option here. I'm going to finish selecting my palette of eight. And we'll show you in more detail what that does later. Window and door seals will also show you later. 2D and 3D representation is standard, and the last object is all the links. So click on which side you want the framing system to take place. This has now been applied, and if we now look at this in 3D, we can now see um, our system uh, of, uh, of boards or tables uh, cut around the windows, um, and also you can see the outline of the subframe system as well at the same time. Now the great thing about Ar Archicad is that at any time we can select the walls and uh, select the windows uh, and make changes to these um, and uh, everything is, is parametrically involved, everything is linked together. So we're going to quickly have a look at, uh, at the window and just show you that if you do decide to change the window size then it will parametrically change the boards around it. So let's just half the width of this window down to uh, a thousand millimeters. And you can see there that the boards have now moved and the framing finishes have moved around it. You also see here that in, in detail, we're just showing this at 1 to 100 scale at this time, uh, you can also see where uh, the frames are. So the framing is indicative, um, just so you understand that there is a subframe, um, we have to allow the subframe to be there. So we can have different placement methods as well, and we'll go into that a little bit later regarding grid. But uh, late in the 2D representation, you can also see here that we've got the windows and uh, and door cutouts. So if we have a look at 3D representation in view mode, we're going to view the cladding first of all. So we're going to edit the cladding. And we're going to have a look at this. The easiest way to do this is in elevation. So if I select the right elevation here, you now get this little hot spot circle. So this means that you can start moving uh, the boards around. So you've got to make sure, first of all, that you are on the right tool. So if you do it wrong, it does this. If you do it right, by making sure you select on the panel the move tool, you are able to rotate the way in which the frame works. Um, and there we go. So I can have a, a, a non kind of 90 degree frame. I can also move the source point of, or origin of where the, the frame will start. So I can kind of move the pattern around. But I'm going to put this back to have it as a. Uh, at 90 degrees a horizontal, I could have it vertical, but we're going to work on, on a horizontal pattern today. Uh, but play around, do it how, however you want. These All these parameters are within Sembrite's requirements. So what you can do is you can start moving individual rows and columns. Now, there are maximum sizes to these boards as applied by uh, the Sembrite company. So if you make any board too big, a warning sign will come up over that board to say that it is oversized table 
uh, sorry, of just make these smaller. So what I can do now, I can st really start to create a completely custom design uh, for this facade that we're working on, the south elevation of this building. And I can start clicking around and start moving individual columns to make it look a bit better as I would like. You can also do this on a row height as well. And just do one more down here. So once I'm happy with that, we're now going to have a look at selecting the color palette tool. So go back where we were at 3D representation. Um, I'm just going to check that I've got my right color. So we're going to apply this palette now to the facade. So instead of having edit cladding, we're now going to have edit colors. And you can see now on the bottom right hand side of the screen, uh, we've seen a little palette will appear. And very simply, it's a drag and drop feature. So I pick up the material and place it onto the table or board that you require to use. And what we've enabled you to do is you don't have to always go back to the palette. If you wish to apply the same color, click on the hotspot that you just dropped and apply it to the next panel. Now you can, like I said, you can have up to eight colors in this panel and you can just keep clicking away as shown here until you find the design that you want. You can override any color. So if you decide I don't want it as blue, you want it as, as a yellow panel, you just drop the new color over the top. And keep doing this until you are satisfied. Um, and I'll just do a few more here uh, and uh, to show the design that I've done. And there we are. So I've now got a, a very nice custom design and you can now really start to see where I've changed the columns and the rows. Now, I don't like this green, so you can then go back into the options um, of the Sembrite system. If I go back onto color, I can change the hamburg green now to uh, uh, an off-white color, and it will update that palette color as shown now here. So now I have a very cool, very funky design, which is completely unique to me using the tools that we have created. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start editing individual, individual pieces or individual tables, um, as they're called. And so instead of doing rows and columns, you can edit uh, them on a on a board by board basis. So you can now see I've got some new hotspots, and what I can do is I can now grab these hotspots in the same way that we edited the whole rows and columns. We can now change the individual sizes of the boards. And I'll just quickly do this to show you how that will look. It's now much easier to see as I have the different colors which I have applied a moment ago. So again, this enables you to really, really create a custom design. Now the framing system behind it will not amend necessarily to the way that you've done it here. Again, the framing is indicative. Um, so obviously speak to Sembrit themselves. As with the rows and columns, if you drag a board too large, we will warn you that it is of a size which cannot be manufactured. So always make sure that you don't have any of these warning labels within your design. But it's quite clear to see which ones will be too big, and then you can just adjust and go back uh, to where you were. We'll just click undo to make life a little bit easier. And now once you're happy with your design, we can move everything back to uh, the grid placement system. And we can have a look at the detailing on the, on the windows and the sills. So as shown a little bit earlier, you can edit the, the sill depth and the material which is shown on the return around the windows and the door frames. Um, and it's picked out all the windows uh, and doors and openings that I have within the system. It's four, and as you can see, show it's four here. So if I look at this in a 3D view, you'll be able to see um, I've applied a, a color, a red color, to the return. And if I zoom in to the to the door opening, you'll be able to see that uh, I can customize the amount of return as shown. And here you can see the red line, which is around. So very, very detailed, 
um, and it, again it's part of the Sembreed system which they allow, they allow you to have a tile um, or a, a, a piece of board which is a different colour which can really accentuate and highlight your window design as well. So here's the design that I've made. It's not taking me very long at all. It's completely customizable and parametric. You can see that we have window details as well um, and the panel gaps is shown. So really enjoy using this tool. If you have any questions, by all means, please do ask us. And thank you very much for watching.